Hi muckers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing very, very, very well. Okay, I am really, really, really excited for today's video because Dogpack404 has kept his promise where he was going to be making a video exposing Mr. Beast's secret CEO. Now, I have been waiting for this one. I know a lot of you have as well, so we are going to get into it. I'm very excited. If you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Also, completely unrelated, and I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to LA in a couple weeks, and it looks like me and Rosanna might be doing like an in-person collab, which I'm very, very, very excited for. You know that I I, I will ride. I will ride for Rosanna. I, I love her now, and the interview was just so amazing, and I just... I have I've just done a complete 180 and I absolutely love her so much so I'm very much so looking forward to that and also I'm currently accepting people onto the muckers finsta which is like our private page I'm gonna be stop accepting people kind of after the next few days for a little bit I do it in batches so if you go down below it'll be uh pinned go and request to follow and I'll accept as many of you over there it is such a mess over there it's such a mess over there um but anyways let's get to the video okay so dog pack mr beast secret ceo all right i'm very 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 excited for this one all right you ready because i'm ready let's get into it all right let's do it <laughs> i don't know why i'm so pumped it's 3 a.m <laughs> okay so this video is going to focus around one instance of essay i wanted to put all the essay allegations into one video part three Okay, I need to take myself down a peg because this is going to be a serious video, it seems. Three, final video until uh, Jimmy responds. My main thing is just how much more can come out against Mr. Beast, you know what I mean? Like, when you think, this is what happens with these creators, you think you've seen it all and then more comes out. And I definitely think that running up until the release of Beast Games, which I can't believe is still going ahead, um, we're going to see more and more and more and... Huge props to anyone that is continuing to speak out against it. Um, huge props. That's, you know, Jake Weddle, Dogpack404, Rosanna Pensino. Um, basically anyone that's choosing to highlight this because there, believe it or not, is a lot of people in Mr. Beast's camp that are trying to shut this down. And there's a lot of people, as in, that just love Mr. Beast that are trying to shut this down. And while people may think that it's popular opinion to speak out against Mr. Beast, <laughs> I can promise you that the emails that, like, everyone who gets, you know, speaking about Mr. Beast, not directly from him... Not in my case, but from Mr. Beast fans, like you get you get more shit for making videos on this than if you don't. So huge props to everyone that continues, specifically people like Dog Pack and Jake Weddle, who and, and Rosanna actually, because Rosanna was in the Beast Games, you know, who have personal you know relations with this, and I just have a lot of respect for all those people and continue highlighting them. Uh, I sort of overestimated how easy that would be, um, as far as like getting everything approved with victims and lawyers, and like also you know, traditional media is involved. They've been DMing me, you know, New York Times, Time Magazine, uh, also like documentary people, I don't know. You're like, hey, I've worked with Netflix and Hulu and Apple TV and Peacock. Are you interested? And I'm like, I don't know. But, you know, I think people should go to those more legitimate sources to get their stories out. Um, so I've been referring people to other people um, because traditional has, you know, more resources than I do and, and better legal protections than I do for sure. I do have sort of that, that bigger project, the original part three. Um, and I have a lot of other interviews and, and other allegations that uh, I'm working on putting together. So I have something for when Mr. Beast responds, if his response is bad, then I can sort of point out. Question for the culture. Do you think Mr. Beast, Jimmy Donaldson, crazy ass name do you think that uh jimmy is going to respond because it's been so long already that it's normally the time frame in which someone would respond even just on a moral level even just on a moral level if i'm being honest um but i just think that he's i just can't see him responding until the beast games because he's been gonna do everything he can to number one take that big paycheck from amazon that we know he's getting you know 100 million allegedly to do the show uh but also to kind of keep this facade going up and while he's still getting millions of likes i mean the dislikes are creeping up now and people are starting to really 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 kind of wake up to this and like i said with the likes of david dobrik it takes pivotal people like dogpack 404 jake weddle rosanna pancino and all of the victims to speak forward and then It'll be like in two years or something. Everyone will be like, oh, Rosanna was right. Dogpack 404 was right. Jake Weddle was right. That moment will come because it came with David Dobrik. And where is David Dobrik these days? Not posting. Not posting. So it will come. 
hey, he lied here and here and uh, he deflected and straw man argument or whatever, uh, as well as like dropping new allegations um, and doing it in an opportune way so that they get the most eyeballs. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to say this is just around sort of one allegation. Also, everything in this video is allegedly. This video is not monetized. It's for educational purposes only. This is a... Uh, Matters of public interest. I'll put a full disclaimer on the screen. Um, but yeah, here's the video. I love a good disclaimer. Okay, today I'm going to be covering uh, Mr. B's secret CEO, James Warren. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Whoa, 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 whoa. We have suspect number one and suspect number two. Dear Lord. Uh, and his involvement in SA and SA cover-ups, uh, like the one including his uh, best friend, LaCoya Hill, who also happens to be Mr. Beast's secret chief operating officer, or was. Uh, and then I want to touch on the man himself, Jimmy Donaldson. Mr. Beast has very publicly and transparently been engaging in a massive cover-up, um, deleting a lot of evidence. And I think a lot of this cover-up is going uh, sort of completely under the radar. We're not we're not even aware of, of what's being... Um, swept out under the rug and they're getting away with with hiding and deleting evidence uh, after i called out james warren by name in my last video his uh instagram and facebook got taken down and his linkedin got taken down uh, so it's a quick profile on facebook and twitter makes sense but linkedin ooh, ooh, brittle brittle isn't it funny that these people will have no problem having any sort of presence until people catch on like dog pack 404 and then poof, gone gone but don't worry that's not how the internet works James Warren, uh, he's, he's Jimmy's cousin and, and secret CEO. And I say secret because, you know, they're, they're not very open about that fact. Like, he, he doesn't post about it on social media. It wasn't ever attached to his LinkedIn. He's never featured or, or really referenced anywhere. I heard that he's very aggressive. I've, I, I've heard him referred to as a psychopath who screams at people and hits his, his uh, girlfriends. Uh, there's allegedly domestic violence charges that were filed against him. Um, and I say allegedly because... It turns out there's a lot of people in North Carolina named James Warren who, who assault their girlfriends, I guess. So oh uh, I'm still having people look into these cases, um, specifically that surprise witness on YouTube. Uh, she's been super helpful in like behind the scenes, just submitting uh, freedom of information requests and, and just helping me out a lot in general. She's super nice, super smart. She'll be posting a lot of updates on, on her channel uh, as she has been about, about the Mr. Beast situation. Mr. Beast video caused a military operation. Uh, James Warren, also allegedly an ex-drug addict. Uh, I've heard that he he offered cocaine and hookers to editors to stay late. Uh, and, then, and then the really big thing is that there was some incident between him and a female colleague uh, that resulted in the female colleague leaving the company and receiving three years in severance pay. I'm still actively looking into this incident, so if you have information, let me know. Uh, but I've heard from multiple credible sources that this this is true and this did happen. Also, I should quickly clarify that a lot of this investigation is allegedly, um, you know, that's sort of the nature of these, these instances. I have a lot of testimony, corroborating testimony. Um, but the reason I'm publishing this is that hopefully it brings more information to light. Like after, you know, the Jake Weddle interview got posted, uh, which was all mostly testimony, uh, people came out corroborating a story and then ultimately uh, Jimmy ended up apologizing and offering him 190000 What? What? I didn't see this. No one sent this to me. Hey, I wanted to reach out and say I didn't mean to cause you mental stress with that video and I apologize. Clearly it had an effect on you. Not clearly it had an effect on you. You mentioned you'd like to be paid out the rest of the prize money, the other $190,000, and I'd love to make things right with you. I have zero expectations of you mentioning me sending you this money publicly or taking down any videos. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. This is just me wanting to help out and make sure you're good. I just need to know if you'd still use the same bank or not. We'll send the money on Monday. I wish you the best. I didn't see this. Whoa. I love, I'll send you 190. You know, you don't need to take the videos down. You don't need to, you don't need to like publicly address it. You know, oh, please, please. Mr. Beast new video, sending $190,000 to one of my victims. Dear God. Also, this is really interesting how, you know, it's now being alleged that Mr. Beast is not really the one behind the company. It's the cousin, which is really fascinating. But also, 
I know a lot of people have been thinking this, and clearly it's on my mind right now. Isn't it so scary how much information can be out there about people and it just takes people looking into it? Obviously, I'm guilty as sin by Taylor Swift as well in this because, you know, I've never looked into this. A majority of people have never looked into this. It's really Dogpack 404 has really done this first. But that all of this information can be out there about CEOs allegedly having char or charges against them, CEOs allegedly, you know, offering coke and hookers to add. Like, it's out there and it's like these people do they assume it's never gonna come out or do they just like keep going until it comes out or are they just that delusional that they're like ah whatever it's not that bad i need to know your opinion down below dollars which to me i think is is uh most likely an admission of guilt you know you don't apologize for for things that you didn't do uh, so anyway i just want to get that out of the way but also doing that privately and there's not been a single thing publicly interesting but what's not allegedly is that James Warren is the former COO of acquisitions of a real estate investment firm called Greenstone Ventures LLC, which is one of the businesses listed in this indictment of his former uh, business partner, Joshua Hutchins, uh, who was sentenced to 10 years in prison for running a real estate Ponzi scheme. Ponzi schemes are great up until they just go bust. Uh, so before working on Mr. Beast, James Warren uh, was involved. Isn't it crazy how many of these people have mugshots? Totally normal, right? Totally normal. Fraud. Uh, in fact, he's actually mentioned in the court transcripts uh, uh, of this case. This is the sentence hearing for Joshua Hutchins. I'm gonna highlight testimony from just one of these victims, a retirement age woman named Sylvia. She testifies, I came to know Mr. Hutchins through a very reputable and successful real estate attorney who highly recommended Mr. Hutchins and who eventually left his agency to become the chief operating officer of Mr. Hutchins' investment firm. The chief operating officer of Mr. Hutchins' investment firm. She explains that the reason she trusted Mr. Hutchins was through the strong recommendation and endorsement from that very reputable and successful real estate agent. He represented Mr. Hutchins as highly competent and capable. He presented a successful track record in how Mr. Hutchins had delivered for other investments. On the next page, page 16, she testifies, my trust was and has been severely violated. This is the equivalent of financial Many of us entrusted Mr. Hutchins, who we've come to know to be fraudulent. Just $1.3 plus million dollars of worthless paper signed by him fraudulently oh misrepresented in the courts. Oh uh, so Hutchins was convicted for soliciting investment monies by telling victims that their money would be put to work on a specific property. Uh, in fact, Hutchins did not put all the investor funds to work on the property on which the investor was solicited to invest and instead regularly used investor funds on other properties or personal expenses. Uh, now, what kind of personal expenses? Well, apparently he bought an AR-15 and hundreds of rounds of ammunition. Uh, his wife had a domestic violence order of protection against him. Uh, he's accused of calling his wife a lying rat and sending menacing photos of himself in tactical gear in the woods to her friends and family. Uh, again, according to Sylvia's testimony, James Warren represented Mr. Hutchins as highly competent and capable. She continues on page 17. James Warren. Sorry for sitting in silence. I'm just trying to take this in. Oh my God. The then realtor who recommended me to Hutchins also encouraged us to work with Mr. Hutchins on trying to make it work. And we did until it became very evident as to his apparent intent of complete fraud. So James appearing to sort of try to mediate this exchange saying, hey, give him a chance. Don't, don't pursue him. Don't sue him. Just make it work, right? The real losses due to fraud are evident. Financially, he's devastated my retirement. I can only hope and thank the good Lord that I have a brain to be able to function and try to earn back as much as possible. The impact, over $1.3 million in real losses. Uh, these are not, I got a piece of property. It was all fraud. Uh, she goes on to describe her financial troubles through in her years, retirement. Her mother who had Alzheimer's disease, uh, how in the crash of 2008, she lost her job and for two years was unemployed. In 2014, she had a severe cancer diagnosis, was out of work for over a year. She continues, in spite of all that, I've lived very frugally and tried to make things work. I've made him know of all my history and I told him I could not take the risk. He and James Warren, the then realtor, stated, oh, real estate. She goes on to describe how they presented it as a safe investment opportunity for her. And then James Warren's business partner defrauded her of $1.3 million. Now, can I claim definitively that James Warren was aware of the fraud that was taking place and willingly complicit uh, in helping Mr. Hutchins defraud uh, old ladies? No. 
But uh, from what I've heard of James Warren's character, how he's hit ex-girlfriends, not let them leave the house, beat his dog, uh, defrauded people in his own ways, uh, creative juice is, a, is an interesting one that could be looked into, uh, which was done with Mr. Beast, as well as another scheme that we'll get into that he conducted. Dude! There is something so just... It's like hard to put it in, it really is hard to put it in words because it's like, again, with Mr. Beast, it's like, how much have we heard that he is ethical? How much have we heard that he's the good guy, the nice guy and stuff? And it's like, these are the people he's hiring. These are the people here in his circle, here in his family, here in his friends, here in his like, what the fuck is going on? And these are the, the level of people that can do regular people so badly but they are just praised in society number one and they are catered to because they're rich and they get rich in the most unethical ways but that's fine because they're rich with LaCoya Hill. I, I personally believe that when he was working with Mr. Hutchins, he was in similar company. I, I think the COO of acquisitions would uh, would know and, and be sort of responsible for uh, properties not being properly acquired through through the court system. But again, that's my opinion. That's all allegedly. Now on to his alleged best friend, LaCoya Hill. They both went to UNC Chapel Hill together and they both, after graduating, got into real estate. Uh, but by 2017, LaCoya Hill was running an adult entertainment event business in San Francisco. Fuck every landlord, by the way. Hill Entertainment. Boo, landlords. And in 2019, he was hired to Mr. Beast as a... And I don't want to hear it down below. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I've said before, fuck landlords. I literally, all the comments are like, but I'm a landlord. I'm like, I don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear it. Producer. <laughs> God, so loud. I'm gonna get a noise complaint. To this place where you know you have the drag queens, the muscle daddies, the bears, the twinks, the like posh boys. Now I'm all for personal freedoms. I believe adults should be able to do whatever they want. However, I question what uh, qualified the sort of go-go dance drag daddy of San Francisco for a job producing YouTube content for children. But you know, it'd also be weird if if Mr. Beast hired uh, Johnny Sins as the janitor. I guess. Uh, it's not the real issue, though. The issue is that in late 2021, he was allegedly fired. For Sorry, back up that Zoom a little bit. Back up that Zoom a little bit. <laughs> sexually assaulting his assistant. Now, I put fired in quotation marks because he was actually quietly moved to the dubbing company, which was Unilingo at the time. Here is uh, proof that he used the lead LaCoya at Unilingo.tv email. Links back to him. Links to these photos, one of which was the profile picture for his YouTube channel, uh, which also after my first video, his YouTube channel mysteriously got deleted. Uh, and at some point, his uh, Twitter also got deleted. I don't know if that's when he sexually assaulted his assistant. I don't know if that's after my first video got posted. Either way, uh, booty call Wednesdays are canceled. He was actually brought back to Mr. Beast. In Not booty call Wednesdays. Um, again, it's just super ironic that all of these people are running for the hills. Deleting social media platforms, wiping social media platforms, not responding to things, privately trying to settle things. Like, if you are not guilty of anything, and this goes for all of them, and this goes for most people in general, why do you act, why do you act like that? Why do you act like this if you're not hiding something, guilty, or running away from something, or you don't want the truth out there? And again... I cannot give enough props to people like this creator who are willing to put themselves on the line to expose things like this. I think it's one of the most credible things that a content creator can do, if I'm being completely honest. And, and Dogpack specifically has my utmost fucking goddamn respect. 2023, after sexually assaulting his assistant prior, I am promoted to chief financial officer, which is- Got promoted after that? Here's some evidence from the internal Slack channel on Mr. Beast showing LaCoya Hill acting in some COO capacity, saying there's news reporters outside, do not engage with them. Uh, this was shortly after the Time Magazine article came out. Uh, so here I have a document. Sorry, it's so crazy as well that we have people on the Mr. Beast camp being like, there's reporters outside, don't engage with them. 
But you've nothing to hide. Surely you've nothing to hide. Go talk to them. Sure, you loved the press when they were on your side. Right. Jimmy. Document uh, showing testimony from former Mr. Beast employees uh, talking about LaCoya Hill. And uh, when I say verified former Mr. Beast employee, I had them send some form of proof. Um, I, I know who some of these people are. They just want to remain anonymous. But, uh, you know, I'm willing to share. This. And fair, fair fucks to them for still speaking out. If it needs to happen. Personally, I don't think Mr. Beast is going to deny sort of this LaCoya Hill story that I'm going to show you. Uh, but here's the first testimony, and I'll say this person is, is especially credible, in my opinion. I asked them, did you see or hear of any sexual misconduct at the company? They say, yes, LaCoya Hill, the current COO, in 2021... The current? ...named victim's name. I heard LaCoya acted very inappropriately with victim, booking hotel rooms with only one bed, walking around in his underwear, having victim come to his house and showing him his sex toy collection. Just in general, LaCoya made victim uncomfortable. Victim started complaining to higher-ups and a report got written. LaCoya was put on paid leave for like a month. Paid leave. Paid leave. Booking hotel rooms with only one room with said employee. Having them come to the house and show your sex toy collection. Walking around in your under... Then Mr. Beast moved him to the dubbing company and he was hired back. Hired, hired back to Mr. Beast. Promoted to CEO. And, and promoted. Jimmy James. Promoted. Sue 100% know his history. Also, I heard that when victim was let go, he was given $30,000 in severance. Uh, I could get you victim. Isn't it crazy that people say Mr. Beast is so giving with all of the money that he gives away to like homeless people and stuff, but he actually gives away more money to employees that he has to pay in severance because they've been done so fucking dirty? His number, I don't know if he'd talk. Uh, I respond, yeah, that'd be great. Also, is there proof he moved to the dubbing company? Where's those fucking Mr. Beast videos? Giving 30000 to my employee who may or may not sue me. That's literally what we're dealing with here. Company. I could look. It was the original. It's a creator for children, by the way. Mr. Beast practically forced them to hire LaCoya, and then they poached Unilingo's employees and copied their whole business and created Creator Global. Verified employee number two. Ask them the same question. Have you heard second one. A second employee. Yes. I don't know how to spell their name, but LaCoya, something like that. He was brought in last year after having not worked there for a year or so at a very high level. I respond, LaCoya Hill. They say... The reason he had been asked to leave previously is that he had sexually harassed someone that still worked at the company when he was brought back. Yes, LaCoya Hill. But they brought him back knowing he had sexually harassed an employee previously. And people often talk about LaCoya making them very uncomfortable on shoots. I verify employee number three. I'm looking into more accusations of sexual misconduct at the company. Wondering if there's anything you could corroborate. Have you heard of anything about LaCoya Hill? They respond, the old gay guy who likes to bang 18-year-old straight employees. Yeah, I've heard of him. Anything non-consensual to your knowledge? I heard he got in trouble for hooking up with his 18-year-old straight assistant, but the company kept it quiet from what I heard. He's a producer and worked in the adult entertainment before Mr. Beast. Yeah, LaCoya Hill Entertainment. I heard he was fired for sexual harassment then brought back a year later. That's what I heard too. Employee number four. Do you know who LaCoya Hill is? Yes. And you're aware of the case that has been covered up for some time? Explain. Essayed multiple people, apparently roofied multiple people as well. I verify employee number five. I'll also say this person is especially credible, uh, but they worked there a while ago, like 2020, 2021, uh, around then. Okay, few things. LaCoya sexually assaulted his assistant who was straight and LaCoya was gay. You probably already know that, but James is best friends with him, so holy shit, was that surprising that they kept him around way longer than they should have. There were reports of- Not way longer than they should have. Kept him around full fucking stop. Hired him back and promoted him, allegedly. Oh my god. Mr. Beast is, is the biggest creator on YouTube, I think. Yeah, Mr. Beast is the biggest creator on YouTube. And I think that this is quite honestly the worst things we have ever heard about a creator. By the way, may I add, with minimal to no backlash. Now, you may be like, Adam, please. We're in a very niche community. Very niche community. This is not representative of all YouTube, all social media. Mr. Beast is being very protected right now. You may see the videos from me, Dogpack, Rosanna, Jake Weddle, other drama channels, other commentary channels. You may even see an article or two. It's a very niche part of the internet. He is being very, 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 very protected. Have you heard this anywhere before this? Have you heard this anywhere before this? 
I know that you've heard this. Will anything be done? I darn hope so. Will anything? Don't know. Don't know. You know why? Because Beast Games hasn't came out yet. He has so many deals. It's always the fucking nice guys. It's always the fucking nice guys. Him making the assistant sleep in the same room slash bed with him on trips, touching him inappropriately, and dangling his job in front of him. Uh, employee number six. Number six. Employee Hill. I heard that incident happened. I heard they let him go, and I heard they brought him back and just put him in a different com department. But also, how many employees are talking about this, and Mr. Beast nor his team thought this was ever going to come out? This many people knew about it behind the scenes? It was only a matter of fucking time. And and I think, I don't know, but I think he's working there again. Uh, now, recently, Mr. Beast has let LaCoya Hill go. Oh, they had this sort of leaked email where they say, uh, Company confidential. Do not distribute. Ba -ba. Well. Therefore, along with Jeff Hausenbold, our new president and COO, right? Alluding, alluding to the fact that LaCoya Hill is no longer working there. Now, I have been open with Mr. Beast uh, about the fact that I was going to cover LaCoya Hill. This is a single frame in my first video where I reference LaCoy. He's also in my Twitter header. And I've also just told people who work at Mr. Beast that uh, they have to let LaCoy Hill go. Uh, so they did what I wanted and let him go, right? Well, just on a whim, I decided to look into the Creator Global LinkedIn, and it had gone private to where everyone just shows up as a LinkedIn member, LinkedIn member, right? But I saw this. L, LinkedIn member, president of Creator Global. I thought, you know what, that's a little suspicious. Uh, so I reached out to one of my connections close to Mr. Beast and I said, hey, can you look into this account for me? Because sometimes if you have connections, you can see uh, private LinkedIn accounts. And this is what they saw. LaCoya Hill listed as the current president at Creator Global. No work history between graduating UNC in May 2001 and becoming the president at Creator Global in 2024. Dude, this is like the three cup game where you gotta like keep track of uh, the pet and this as, as Mr. Beast just moves them between companies. They just sort of kept moving them around. You know, like those killer whales at SeaWorld, after it kills a trainer, they'll then move it up to Seattle. They don't give them their background. Which I heard, you know, Mr. Beaster or James Warren forced Unilingo to hire LaCoya as sort of part of their partnership oh without, you know, sending them the, the report on uh, his, his alleged sexual misconduct at the company. I also have a voice memo from James Warren showing that they told Unilingo to process a $28,000 bonus for LaCoya, uh, which there's definitely something suspicious going on with that. Hey, buddy, it's James. Um, sorry to be bothering you. I've done my absolute best not. So this is the Mr. B CEO, James Warden. Bother you. Um, but uh, LaCoya had uh, presented a bunch of stuff to me and Jimmy a little bit ago. All really great stuff. Um, but he had asked me and Jimmy personally. He's like, hey you know, can I have a, a $28,000 bonus for work I did in the past? And I'm like, yeah, of course, man. Um, and the of course, of course. Uh, I had brought him up to my level and I don't take bonuses. So for like two years, he didn't get any bonuses when our guys were getting like crazy percentage bonuses. Um, I need a favor. Um, Sue cannot process this bonus through Beast. Um, I need a solid. Can you please process a 28K bonus for LaCoya? Let me know. Bye. And then they use Let me know, bye. to try to steal Unilingo's business, poach their employees, take their clients. And then Mr. Beast launched Creator Global, where LaCoya Hill is currently listed as the president. So that's LaCoya Hill. So literally just moving your friend from department to department to company to company based on in each one, he makes everyone uncomfortable, allegedly, that you have to move him to another one. Has anyone ever considered firing him, letting him... Oh, that would make too much sense. And, then, and that's just what I can put on the record. I will say that if Mr. Beast tries to deny this, more evidence will be brought to light and more people will definitely come out uh, defending me saying, hey, this is true. These allegations are true. This is all true. Uh, allegedly, in my opinion, for legal reasons. Okay, now let's move on to the man himself, Jimmy Donaldson. Uh, first, I'll show this testimony from another former Mr. Beast employee just to show sort of the work culture, uh, especially from a female's perspective. Uh, she says, on my very first day, I was told to avoid being alone in a room with certain people in positions of power. At least once a week, I was subjugated to inappropriate questions and conversations. Once a male coworker asked me what I would do if Jimmy assaulted or harassed me. On another occasion, the same co-worker said it wasn't fair that women could just decide a past sexual encounter wasn't consensual. Many of the men I worked with would make assault and pet jokes on a daily basis. They would scream and hit walls when they got upset. 
the minute any woman leaves a room, they would talk about if slash how they would fuck her. I've heard men comment on female contestants' bodies many times. Not everyone behaves this way, but no one openly speaks out against it in fear of losing their job. If you complain about any of this, you'll be shamed for being too sensitive or just ignored. You can't take anything to HR either because Jimmy's mom runs it. It's pretty common for people to essentially get paid to leave and stay quiet if they make enough noise about something. There is no employee handbook, by the way. If you ask for one or what the company's policies are, they just tell you to ask them and they'll let you know if anything is against the rules. But again, there's nothing in writing, which is true. The, the leaked document is, is just the production manual. Uh, not given to all employees. Uh, here's another testimony. This person will go on the record. This is Jess, uh, who accused Ava Chris Tyson of, of sexual assault. I think her case has been sort of mostly ignored because she probably wasn't, she wasn't a minor when it happened. But she was a Mr. Beast employee, and you can see in her evidence, in her communications with the company, this, the clear signs of a cover-up. Uh, you can see them, like, threatening her with legal, legal action and emails and, and saying, like, oh, we're going to have a law firm investigate this. Well, they had one firm do an internal investigation, McGuire Woods LLP, the same law firm that sent me my first cease and desist. Uh, but then they hired, a, I guess, Harvey Weinstein's legal team, allegedly, to re-review everything. Uh, so I guess they weren't happy with the results of the first internal investigation. Also, yeah, this new law firm, Quinn Emanuel, Mr. Beast has worked with them previously, uh, allegedly, to internally investigate LaCoya Hill's sexual misconduct. So, uh, why don't you make that report public, Jimmy? Uh, anyway, here's Justice. Oh my fucking God. I only hung out with Jimmy a handful of times, but he definitely was a little more reserved around me because I wasn't a part of his inner circle or the boys club as it's called. I did hear Jimmy straight up say that the guy making a documentary on him right now has footage of him saying stuff that would get absolutely get him canceled. It's just a well-known thing the boys club is misogynistic and looks down on women in the company despite what they might say publicly. Behind closed doors, the women in the company know that the culture is a problem. I have heard multiple stories of Jimmy being directly informed of SA happening oh at the God. company and proactively working to keep it quiet. So just directly implicating Jimmy in the SA cover-ups. LaCoya with an 18-year-old straight assistant. Dude, how many people have said that story now? One of people corroborating that story. Oh. Ava told Jimmy about a time she was essayed by another talent member on a private jet, and talent members slash employees making advances towards contestants was a regular occurrence. The reason all of this was able to happen for so long is because Jimmy is deeply misogynistic and only respects what he considers to be traditional women. And let's also consider that Mr. Beast's girlfriend tweeted recently and was like, you guys, only half of what's true or what's out there is true about Mr. Beast right now or half of what's out there is lies. Half. Half. He half. pushed those values into the company when he created it and it resulted in several essay allegations oh. we know about and probably a lot more we don't know yet. Uh, which I will say a lot of the essay allegations are still not public. Like, man, just fire James Warren and LaCoya Hill. Fire them. Don't just move them around. Uh, or I'm going to start dropping nukes. Anyway, let's, uh, I'm, I'm going to move Maddie Spadell away from all this. I just want to touch on this briefly. Uh, so Maddie Spadell, who's Mr. Beast's very public ex-girlfriend of two and a half years, posted this on her Instagram story. Uh, she doesn't mention Jimmy by name. It's sort of vague, I think, probably either because she's under an NDA or maybe she's just testing the waters to see how people respond before sharing more information. Fair, very fair. It's like not that vague if you have reading comprehension and can read context clues. She says she spent years being quiet, never acknowledging that time in her life. 19 to 21 are formative years. It impacted how she saw herself and how she trusted men. Months of therapy. She says how he treats other women will ultimately be how he treats you. So how does Jimmy treat other women? I don't I don't really get along with women. I don't I don't really get along with women. I don't I don't really get along with women. Well, women are stupid because they're inferior to men. That when she and a group of contestants who were menstruating during the event had asked the production staff about getting their underwear more quickly, she had been told that it was not a medical emergency. You'll never actually respect a woman, but just act like you respect them. My God. Mr. Beast withheld my birth control. I have ovarian cysts. You can't just stop taking birth control. I don't I don't really get along with women. Also in this podcast, Jimmy goes on to talk about his relationship with his current girlfriend Tia in uh, very weird ways in my opinion. For us now like an idea of a date is just to like take an eye. But also I'm like okay Mr. Beast has never really been on my radar. His content is not something I enjoy and I know that that is for a lot of people who watch these videos but I'm like for the people that was actively watching this content of Mr. Beast was there any red flags to you other than him being like I don't fucking respect women I don't get on with women. I'm like was there anything there maybe anything? Let me, like, let me ask the audience. 
IQ test and then study and see if we can get it higher. I can't and I the other day just to like take an IQ test. And then she was like, I'm an author. And I was like, fuck yeah, good. God, he's yeah. such like a misogynistic prick. Like acting like it was the greatest book ever. I don't. I don't really get along with women. It's all of our jobs to protect our friends, our moms, our wives, our sisters, our daughters, ourselves from people like that. That's 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 a pretty clear statement, if you ask me. Now I almost feel like there's been a campaign against Maddie Spadell uh, to discredit her before she's even shared any information. A lot of like cloud chaser and gold digger allegations. That's a crazy thing as well when people are trying to shut someone down before they've even said anything. That's when people know that shit is about to hit the fan. And that's when we should be supporting these people in terms of speaking out. Isn't that crazy? People are already trying to shut her up. She hasn't even said anything. Isn't that fucking crazy? Oh, but the woman has to shut up. But not fucking Jimmy. Never. Never. So this is also from that uh, Rolling Stone article. They referenced the breakup. Uh, the reporter says, you know, Maddie Spidell, who's appeared in a handful of videos, uh, those in Mr. Beast's inner circle told me that Spidell had been a positive influence. Because the full thing was that Maddie tried to get Jimmy to be like less online and less focused on, you know, this cycle of uploading videos and less obsessive with YouTube. And he ultimately allegedly broke up with her because they had different morals. Not his was money and whatever, allegedly. And hers was trying to make, make him more normal. To prioritize work-life balance more. That was it. Work-life balance. I want to comment on the record about the breakup, citing Spidell's privacy. Yet Tyson, Chris Tyson, uh, says Donaldson's singular focus on work was a major contributing factor. I think that's what he's going to be looking for next. Somebody who can match his obsession with business obsession with business and money uh, so not a bad word to be said about maddie spadell from jimmy or the people in his inner circle which is pretty unusual uh, of an ex-girlfriend yeah, i'll show some of the brain dead media coverage uh, headed by cuck star and his, his news organization drama alert so here's just one of his many posts about maddie a uh, thread of every time mr b's ex-girlfriend allegedly shaded him uh, downplaying the clout chasing claims against her so let's see this extensive thread uh, one post of a TikTok where she says she was traumatized at 19. Why do you think that's about Jimmy, Keemstar? Allegedly complaining about Mr. Beast fans. This is her most popular TikTok period with over 6.5 million views and was posted last year. And then Drama Lurk goes on to give one more example. And that's the end of the thread. Oh, but that's a huge thread, right? Popular TikTok. Uh, seems to be alluding to her relationship with Mr. Beast. Uh, and then she has hundreds of more TikToks where she never even tried to recreate the success of that first TikTok, right? Like if I'm her social media manager, I'm telling her, hey, post about Jimmy Moore. And she obviously knows that if she did that, she would get more views, and yet she doesn't do it. Hundreds of TikToks, about 30 of them are about Taylor Swift, maybe three are about her uh, ex-boyfriend of two and a half years, which for a Swifty, uh, it's extremely, extremely low to, to post only three times about your ex-boyfriend who's uh, now incredibly famous. So if she, if she was cloud chasing, she's doing a horrible job at it. Now, Drama Alert, on the other hand, is, has posted more times in the past month about Maddie Spadell than Maddie Spadell has ever posted about Mr. Beast. Obviously. Obviously. Oh, my God. I'm going to get so many noise complaints. I just to address that because I think Mr. Beast knows Maddie has nukes against him and uh, he's trying to discredit her. So let's look at this leaked email. This is from Mr. Beast. It says, uh, yesterday Dawson saved 100 billion. Whoa, guys. Whoa. Ho guys, I don't know how that got there. I don't. I, that was the wrong email. I don't know how that got there. Uh, yeah, so I've actually heard from pretty what? people that this email. I, that was the wrong email. Oh. Private email, do not distribute. Yesterday, Dawson saved 100 children from a burning orphanage. It's important that we keep this secret. Do not send this directly to Keemstar. All right. Yesterday, Dawson saved 100 Whoa, guys. Whoa. Oh. Guys, Sorry, it took me a second. Got there. I don't... I, that was the wrong email. I don't know how that got there. Uh, yeah, so I've actually heard from pretty credible people that this email was not leaked. So, uh, you know, why lie about it? A devious or deceptive tendencies. Here he is quoted in that Rolling Stone article saying, I'm great at lying. Uh, but I want to focus in on this part where they say, therefore, along with Jeff Hausenbold, our new president and COO, we will be hiring a new chief human resource officer, chief financial officer, interesting, uh, and general counsel along with other roles to add capacity and competencies to foster a better internal culture as we continue to grow. So what's interesting about this is that the only person named in an initiative to foster a better internal culture is Jeff Hausenbold. Uh, but what's ironic about this is that Jeff Hausenbold has been in the news previously for, for the internal culture that he helped create as managing. It's a big ass smile, isn't it? Oh my God.
partner at the SoftBank Vision Fund. Here's New York Post. Nasty executives shaped macho culture at SoftBank Vision Fund. And here's Bloomberg Business Week. SoftBank Vision Fund employees depict a culture of recklessness. It has also been described. Are any of them normal? Fancy and harassment. Uh, so seemingly all the problems that people have with uh, Mr. Beast's internal culture. Uh, but this Bloomberg article also goes to call Jeff out by name. Jeff Hausenbold collects cars, including. So basically, the new CEO and president and shite. Blue Ferrari and claims to own a twenty thousand bottle wine cellar, although he doesn't drink himself. <laughs> uh, acquaintances describe him as smart and arrogant and almost entirely lacking in self awareness. Uh, he's also gotten away with some questionable behavior. In a discussion about whether to invest in the stationary bike startup Peloton in 2017, according to two people who were in the meeting, Hausenbold opined that its exercise equipment appealed in part to men who masturbated to its workout videos. Baby, I Dude, I want to jerk Oh my god, this video is so light up. Uh, the claims, but it's an oddly specific thing for two people to make up a story about masturbating to Peloton workout videos. So yeah, maybe I don't see the vision with uh, hiring this guy as the new president. Also, this is just what I can share right now. I do have more information that I'm trying to get out. Uh, you know, trying to get permission from the victims and everything. Um, also trying to save some things for, for when Mr. Beast responds. Uh, so anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs> Okay, I mean, shout out to that surprise uh, witness TV as well. And I saw that Rosanna commented on this video and said, thank you for shining light on this. Where's the accountability? Now, here's my thing. Deleting evidence will never look good for you in the moment or ever. It will not age. And it's just the, there's so much of a conversation here with hiring people back who have done really awful things, moving them positions and stuff. But, like, a big conversation that, like, I just can't believe that, like, the general public are not having is, like, how badly he treats women. And how little respect he has for them. When was the last time Mr. Beast uploaded? Mr. Beast. 11 days ago. 11 days ago. 11 days ago. And let me tell you why it's important people continue speaking up. 3.7 million likes 1.7 million dislikes what are the comments on this and by the way i'm subscribed so i can get updates this is what i do oh and of course there's no comments about it of course there's no comments about it hmm, i guess they're working very hard let me go into newest because they really can't control that right oh so i'm to believe that the newest comment on this video from the biggest creator of all time, 312 million subscribers, a recent video, the most recent comment was 17 hours ago. Bitch, you can go on one of my videos and there will be more recent comments than that. And I'm a nobody. Interesting. Interesting. Huge shout out to Dogpack404. I will link the video down below. Go and support it. Go send it love. And dear Lord... When is it, when is something going to be done? Or when is the conversation going to be done? I'll talk to you down below. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate creators like Dogpack404, Jake Waddle, Rosanna Pansino, That Surprise Witness TV. I'll see you in my next one. Goodbye.